Hello, BookTube. I'm here to do a book tag. Uh, Steve Donahue has tagged me into the book addict tag. Where he got any idea that I'm addicted to books, I just don't know. Uh, me? Addicted? Short answer is yes. Um, yeah, there's some interesting questions here, and I agree with him that, yeah, um... I, I am new and um, for book two, but uh, I'm, I'm getting new uh, subscribers all the time. So sometimes they haven't caught up with or would want to watch everything that I've done so far. So it's a good way to uh, reintroduce and introduce uh, new things. So there are twelve questions, and uh, question number one is: What is the longest amount of time you can go without? picking up a book. Uh, if I'm in where my books are, uh, if I move, I've got to pick up a book <laughs> in order to move. Uh, it's uh, that, That's the way it is at the moment, and I'll get into um, why that is and where uh, I want to go with that. But yeah, most of the time, um, like if I'm here, I'm always... Uh, have has a book, have a book uh, within arm's reach uh, that I'm reading or, or perusing. Um, so, but it the longest would be when I would be at work because I don't always take something to work a book with me uh, when I was going to work. Um, so it would be like an eight hour to nine hours or whatever it is, I suppose. Uh, question number two: How many books do you carry on your person? Or Kindle at any one time. Well, like I usually, I usually do. If I have my bag with me, I usually, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I usually do have a book with me. But I, I, well, now I'm not getting out anywhere, so I suppose you could say I got uh, with me is thousands. <laughs> uh, and I don't really use. I have a Kindle, but I don't really use it uh, that much. Um. Number three, uh, do you keep every book you buy, receive, or are you happy to pass them along? I pass books along at the moment uh, if I've upgraded it or if I really didn't like it um, at all. Um, or if, if something I ordered and it's not to my satisfaction, I had to reorder it. Uh, and I wasn't happy with it for one reason or another, whether it was an ex-library or had underlining in it, I will pass it on to a charity, uh, definitely. I've got a little stack of of such-like books to, that will go eventually to a charity shop. Um, I generally, at the moment, keep everything uh, that I have, that, that I get. It's partially because I... I, I I don't, like, I will give stuff to charities, uh, charity bookshops, uh, but I prefer to, if I'm going to give a book to someone, I prefer to give it to them directly. So, and I won't give them, you know, something that is like an ex-library or something like that. I want to give them a half-decent copy. Now, I do have duplicates of items, and then, yeah, we'll get into that uh, as, as well in a few moments. Um... But at the moment, I don't know anybody to give books to um, uh, that I that I can do that, and that's been a bit of a problem. I've always have uh, in Canada. I always knew people that I could give books to, and I've I was always giving books away. And yeah, I never, I never, um, I never lend books um, at all uh, because yeah, as Steve says, you get them back if you if you do get them back, uh, they're usually not in the condition that you. Uh, that, that you uh, gave them out as so I would prefer to give it to uh, give a book to someone and I am perfectly willing to you know there's just there's a lot of people that I don't know I, I just well a lot of people I don't know I mean what I mean is I don't know anybody uh, at the moment personally that I can give books to uh, that would appreciate them I could give them but they wouldn't appreciate them they wouldn't have a clue what to do with them um Number four, how long would you spend in how long would you spend in a bookshop on a standard visit? 
I usually go uh, once a month, and sometimes more, but uh, it's been generally once a month after payday, obviously, to uh, my local bookshop, a used bookshop. Um, I will sometimes spend spend there, like I'll go sort of mid-morning after it's open, and I'll stay till they close sometimes, especially if, um, you know, they're not that busy or other um, customers come in that I know uh, because you get to know people. And we just sit there sometimes and talk for a long time about books or other subjects. Uh, and I'm not always browsing. Uh, but then I will. I will just go th go over through um, the books and try to sort of pull stuff down that I haven't actually looked at before to, to see, okay, well, what what is this? You know, is it something that will interest me uh, if, I, if I don't know what the book is? So, yeah, I will spend uh, quite a bit of time in the bookshop. And that's that's my local bookshop. When I go, say, to Cambridge or Oxford, I don't spend near that much time. Um, Cambridge, um, there's, there's a few bookshops there. I would say I'd spend maybe an hour or two in each uh, maximum. Uh, and then uh, same as in Oxford. Well, Oxford, the, the ones that I used to spend a lot more time in have closed up, so... Uh, and I haven't been to Oxford now in a good six, six, seven years, I think. So I don't know what the situation is there. Well, I know what it is now, because um, nothing's open. Um, next question. Uh, how much time per day do you actually spend reading? Uh, that's a little difficult. Well, right now I'm trying to spend as much as I can. Uh, but there's other things that are preventing me. I don't know how many hours. I, I would say I'm, I'm at the moment doing minimum like six or six, seven hours reading uh, spread throughout the day. When I'm working, it's not near as much as that. I've got maybe three or four hours that I'll spend in an evening if I got a good evening to, to, to read. Um... And, yeah, it all depends on what is happening around and how, how well I feel if I can stay awake without falling asleep um, for, for various things. Um, number six. Where does uh, the task of picking up a book appear on your daily to-do list? Um... I don't really have uh, to do this with that. Uh, what I used to do uh, in the mo when I get up in the mornings, I always like when I was going to work, um, I always got up an hour before I had to go. Uh, that sometimes get some to eat or just putter around. Uh, I would read a little bit, like I'd read uh, some poetry or something like that. So it would be in the morning that I would do a little bit of that. Um, but then I started, I discovered BookTube, so I would spend most of that time, um, actually looking at BookTube, so I, I would no longer in the morning, uh, do the reading. And uh, when I went to work, I didn't really have any book, I didn't do anything, because it's just, there was nowhere to go comfortable, uh, to sit, uh, and, and for me to, to read, and I couldn't read at my desk, uh, just to, yeah, it just wouldn't be possible. Um, so I don't read at work, so it's when I come home, um, like when I, that was my routine, I'd come home, and if I had a good routine, I would have a nap for an hour or so, so I'd be home at like 4.30, 5, well, I'd be about 5 o'clock or 6, it depends on when, uh, if I worked at 4.30 most days, uh, I'd, I'd have a nap for an hour till, say, you know, 6.30, I'd get up, eat, by seven o'clock, I would uh, I would read, and and I would try to read anyway, and do any writing uh, from about seven till midnight, and then uh, and then usually around that time I would I would go to bed. Uh, now my routine is uh, getting up at around six a.m. It's uh, anyway between six and eight, uh, and then I read. And we'll catch up a little bit on uh, BookTube. I'd read for as much as I can. I'd, uh, I'd sort of wait for the mail. And around noonish or 1 o'clock, I would usually probably uh, have to have a nap. Uh, it's there, there's I have a few health issues, but uh, 
I would I would I would uh, rest or sleep for about a couple hours. Uh, then I'd be back up at around you know two o'clock say, and around six o'clock. It, it depends on how things were. I might need to take another nap. Uh, I'm like a cat. <laughs> I need naps. But then uh, from then on, from after I get up about seven o'clock, like I I'm I'm up until like three four o'clock in the morning now. Uh, and that's the most productive time I have, uh, is around now when I'm doing this video. Um, so I intersperse it a little bit, but I do, uh, because I, I'm finding that if I, if I go to bed for like, you know, seven, six, seven hours, I'm really only sleeping about two and a half and then the rest of the time it's wasted. I'm not really, uh, doing it. And so if I get up after three hours, uh, read, and or do whatever I want, and then catch the extra few hours throughout the day. I can get up to maybe uh, you know six, six, seven hours of actual sleep. I know to Steve that's uh, if he sleeps only like three hours a day or less. Uh, I I just can't conceive of that, but because uh, I'm nodding off most of the time uh, if I don't get enough uh, sleep. Um, so I sort of lost track there where I was. Uh, Oh, where does the task of picking up a book? So, yeah. So, at the moment, it's in the morning when I get up. Uh, I do a few other things. I, I try to tidy up. I'm, tr I'm trying to organize um, sort of my collection here more. Um, so, I do. I try to do a little bit of that as much as possible. Um, I'm finding that I'm not doing as much as I want to. Um, that's the one thing. I've got the time, but I'm finding, I'm for some reason, the day just disappears um how many books do you uh reckon you own in total including ebooks well physical books i've got approximately four thousand ish um ebooks if you count pdfs and everything i've i've got tens of thousands of those on uh, some discs because before i came uh to the uk here i loaded up uh, and I and I found there was tons of stuff that I was interested in um, that I found a few sites and I downloaded just you know indiscriminately huge amounts of stuff. So on literally um, a few a few DVDs, I've got tens of thousands of books, literally tens of thousands. Uh, they haven't been organized, but they're, 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 they're I found a site that had a whole bunch of old horror and supernatural uh, fiction from uh, late 19th century and early 20th century. Uh, tons of uh, the canon, almost everything that I could find. Um, and also, um, because I'm interested in film, uh, silent film, I, I found some places where I could download old radio magazines and radio uh uh, stories, uh, they, they would come out every week with a, like, it's like a TV guide, but it was for radio, um, and I, I've downloaded hundreds, if not thousands of those from all over, uh, the UK and, uh, the United States and some in Canada, um, I, I've downloaded thousands of scripts, uh, old-time radio scripts, because I'm interested in that as well, um, the radio scripts, uh, I got, uh, early, uh, like the, through the archive.org and other places, uh, early, like silent film magazines and sound, like early cinema, uh, magazines. I've downloaded hundreds, if not thousands of those of various ones. Um, and I still have these on disc. I have, I haven't picked them up. I looked at them for well, well over a decade or more. Um, they are, they are something I want to organize and go through um, and, and see what there is, but I, I do have a big difficulty reading off of a screen. Um, I can do small bits of it, uh, but if I spend too much time, my eyesight goes very blurry, and I find it extremely difficult to get back into reading after that. If I spend too much time on the computer, period, uh, staring at the screen, um, I'm... I'm going to be ruined for most of the day for reading. It's like when I was when I was spending a little more time sort of searching for books in the last couple of weeks. A few of the days I spent too much time and my eyesight just got really blurry. And I found it very, very difficult to, to, to read. Um, so yeah, so the short answer of that is approximately 4,000 physical books. 
and I don't know tens of thousands of ebooks and PD, mostly PDF format. Um, and number eight, approximately how often do you bring up books in conversation? Uh, if it's anybody that's interested in books, I usually bring it up all the time. It's, that's, it's my favorite topic to, to speak about pretty well. Um, even to a few people who, um, like work colleagues, but they did, it sort of, like goes on deaf ears generally, but, uh, because as I say, other than a few people that I, that I know, um, from like the bookshop or a few friends, they're not that many books, people that I know. Um, and I only have a few good friends that are, and, um, and well, one's, one's moved, um, to the far East at the moment. And, uh, and that's why I would give, uh, you know, that's where I pass on books to, to, to him and a few other people, but uh, and it's sort of few and far between now, so uh, I have to do something with the amount that I've got, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, what is the biggest book page count that you've finished? Uh, probably would be Mysteries of Paris. Uh, it's over 1,500 pages uh, by Eugene Sue. Uh, I would say that's probably the biggest single book. Uh, I'm not counting multiple volumes of of, of items because it's not a single book. Um, Number 10, uh, is there a book you had to get your hands on uh, against all odds? Well, I've never really had anything like against all odds, but there are are books, uh, even recently, that I come across... um, Either somebody on book two says, "Oh, you know, I got to look at that. I have to, I have to look at that." And it's not that I; it's against all, all odds. I just order it, or if it's too expensive, then I won't. Um, and if it's something that I'm really interested in, I'll order. Like just recently, uh, there was a big history book of uh, domestic history uh, that I ordered. It was like three pounds something, and it just says good copy, read, you know, reading copy. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Uh, because everything else was too, too expensive, but I I, I want to see it. And I want to get it. Um, so yeah, so I got it. Uh, oh, it's, it's on its way, I should say. Um, and just yeah, a number of other things. Some books about books. Uh, I'm reading something, and somebody re- references to to another book, and I will I will look to see. And if the price is right, I'll get it. Uh, the one thing I suppose I did show it on a previous film was. Uh, Charles Booth's um, survey of London poor labor and poor of London, um, like the, and the new survey as well. That I knew I had to get. It was expensive, but it was something that I could not pass up. So I, I suppose that would be the the best fit for this answer. I knew I had to get that uh, because uh, even though it was pricey for me, but cheap in the long run. Um, number 11, a book you struggled to finish, but finished, uh, but refused to DNF. And that would be, uh, Shadow, the Shadow Play by O'Connor. It's set, uh, in the late 1800s. It's at the Lyceum Theater, so it's Bram Stoker, uh, Alan Terry, and, uh, uh, Henry Irving. And I didn't like it, but I I, I forced myself to, to read it through. Now, uh, number 12. What are three of your main book goals for the year? Now, I do want... I've got um, the Duma series um, that's been translated to new ones, uh, the Three Musketeers cycle that I want to get through. Uh, and a number of other ones. And then there's like this uh, city, uh, The Mysteries of London... Um, two massive volumes that I want to do, but, uh, for reading, but the, the main thing is to sort of assess my collection here a little more because I'm, I'm adding more books, but I don't have any extra room at the moment. Um, I, I do have to, uh, put up some other shelves in a few other places so I can, I can juggle things around and do a few things. But uh, for the moment, by the end of the year, I want to be able to to sort of pull some stuff off the shelves that I'm not really 
looking at at the moment and then sort of you know uh, uh, they'll, they'll be sort of in my other room, in my bedroom, they'll be piled up onto a coffee table. Still accessible, and then the bookshelf that's in behind will be accessible. I just have to move a few things, but I can see everything. Uh, but they're ones that I'm not dealing with too much, really, at the moment. Um, and then also sort of go through and probably... The ones that I have duplicates that, that I can call, and also go through that uh, ones that I've read. Um, and I go, yeah, no, I don't need to keep that one. But a lot of the stuff, a lot of the material I have, I haven't read, so it's not something that I really want to get rid of at this point. I don't really want to get rid of anything, but I know space-wise, because there are certain areas that I want to expand, I want to get more books that I am reading constantly, and I want to keep them for various reasons. Poetry is one that I won't get rid of really anything poetry unless it's a duplicate, because that I use. I go back to a lot of the material, a, a, a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's where I want to get to sort of assess, um, by the end of the year, what is sort of priority for me and see if I can fit this other material in because I know there's more stuff coming through, uh, rearrange items. Uh, I do, um, have some journals that'll be coming at some point. There'll be hundreds of them, but I know, I think I know how I can deal with those because they're not something that I need to face out all the time. They can, as long as I know where they are, they can be in behind because of the, uh, the shelves are deep so I can stack them up in behind some other books and it'll be, it'll be books about books. So that, that all fit there. And that's where along here, this is where I want to expand and, and sort of pull stuff aside. Uh, it's, it's that or get an extra space, uh, for, uh, for storage, uh, which is always a possibility. Uh, I've been trying to do that for about a year in the building that I'm, I'm in here now. I think I have to put that on the back burner at the moment because we don't know what's going to happen uh, job-wise for the future. Um, so, But I don't want to make any huge, drastic changes of shipping out a whole bunch of books and get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. Then I, I wind up, I want to um, I, I get interested in that subject again or get you know into that subject deeper. Uh, like film, I've got two bookcases full of film that I haven't actually looked at for several years. Uh, they are pretty well everything that I want to keep because I have called some of those. There's still a little bit I can call, uh, and I basically call it as I get something else that I know I want to keep. So I probably will not have more than two bookcases of film. But things like essays is always going to grow. Um, and that's the difficult part or the books about books is probably always going to grow. I do have some that I, that I want to, I will probably eventually get rid of. Um, and there'll be a few things like that, that I can get rid of that I've read. I don't want anymore, basically. Uh, but I need to assess that. And that's, that's, that's my main goal. Uh, there's like three there basically is sort of assess what I got, remove, move stuff. And by the end of the year, and I want to know, um, that situation where I am at the end of the year of saying, Okay, um, I need more space, or I need some storage space um, that I can pack up uh, this stuff, list everything, know what I have, where it is, that if I do uh, want to access it, I do. Um, and obviously reasonable, because you got to go for cost. If you could, if i got to spend huge amounts of money to, to store uh, books, then it's it sort of defeats the purpose. Uh, but if I can do that, then I, I might very well um, do that. And as I say, and then they rotate. And then, because I, I'm looking forward to, to a time where, where I um, basically uh, retire at some point, that I can move somewhere else where I can have all my books, and I've enjoyed them and continue to enjoy them. But possibly, you know, it'll be uh, retirement income, possibly, to just start selling so, uh, some of this stuff off through the Internet as mail order. Uh, after I do a little more research on things, because uh, I, I find it very interesting to, uh, it's, I've mentioned in quite a few videos, but again, some might not have seen that, where I get a book plate, or there's signatures, or there's other items in there of interest, or that they are prizes from schools. I want to investigate all this stuff, I want to track it down, and it just, I, I find it interesting to do that. And occasionally you find a very, very interesting story that you can go along with that. And 
and that's the thing. And if I can, if I can do all that and keep this and list everything, and that's the other thing to to keep, to do a possible list. But that's a long term uh, thing. But with my collection, I want to not so much pare it down. I'll probably wind up continuing uh, growing, but I want to pare it down in the sense of ones either that I haven't read, that I know that I'm going to read, that I'm interested in, or reference. And then the ones that I've read, eh, not too keen on that, I'll shuffle them off. I've got quite a few. I've got a few hundred um, uh, crime, crime novels that I do read occasionally. And those, well, once I read them, they can go. They can go. I'm, I'm, I have, unless there was something that I know I'm going to read again, uh, like Sherlock Holmes and things like that. There's a few things that I know I will reread, so I will keep them. Uh, but the other ones that are just sort of fodder, I'll read them and then pass them on, uh, one way or another. Either going to a charity shop or just dump them in my because there'll be paperbacks they can sell, and I can probably just dump them at my bookshop and say, just take them, sell them, or give me, you know, here's a, here's 50 or 60, you know, trade me a couple books for them or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, I'm I'm rambling on, but there's, it was an interesting um, um, uh, uh, prompt here, so I thought I'd uh, tag. So I thought I could go a little more in-depth. Uh, but we're at 26 minutes, so I will end it there, and... I will see you tomorrow, BookTube.